Francisco. Welcome everyone for joining my presentation for this really small group, but thanks anyway for coming. Um, my name is René Kaiwald, I am a web developer and I work for uh, DSA Business Internet, where I mostly work with PHP, HTML, CSS, MySQL, JavaScript as a front-end developer. And in the course of time, I've learned how to build my own extensions, uh, starting Component Creator and now it, it helped me to learn more about uh, how the MVC model works, so it's really nice tool. Um, you can find my social media here. I'll present the, the link to the slides afterwards, so you don't need to make any uh, notes. Everything is online already. Um, Google Maps uses a JavaScript API, and we can use that as an application program interface. And if you want to use um, the API, you can use an API key, but it's not necessary. There are some advantages to use uh, an API key. Um, I'll show you that in my next slide. Um, there's a lot of documentation uh, available um, how to use the, the API and what calls to use, but we'll go in depth use showing code how to do it. So why should you use an API key? Um, Google Maps JavaScript API functions with an a API key. Um, if you use an API key, however, uh, you can use more than 25,000 map loads uh, and you can use it for more than uh, 24 hours. Uh, 25,000 map loads for 24 hours and you can use it for more than 90 days. Um, but if you do use an API key, you can measure your performance and you can measure, uh, you can use it on multiple domains. Um, you can request an API key through the Google Developers Console, and if you get an API key, make sure you use a request a browser key, which is important. Um, Google Maps uses two, uh, the two coordinates to show a point on the map, which is the latitude and the longitude. Um, latitude is the distance between the north and the south of the equator, and the longitude is the distance between east and west, so using a longitude and a latitude coordinate, you can pinpoint every location on Earth. Um, and with the Google Maps uh, Geocode API, you can address, you can convert an address into a Latlon coordinate, and that process is called geocoding. Uh, I've set up here a demo environment. Uh, I've created a component with a component creator. I call it a com address, and it holds a database with uh, of 560 around 560 garage companies, car manufacturing companies in the Netherlands. And for every company, a garage company, uh, I have converted the physical address into a Latlon coordinate. So the modification we will be doing will be done in the component model and in the view. So here is just the, the basic component. Uh, you see addresses uh, with uh, an address, a zip code, a city, and uh, the country. And you can request detailed information about a company. So it's a really basic uh, list view and uh, detailed view of a company. So, to load the Google Maps JavaScript API, all you need to do in the view of your extension, um, you need to get the document object, with jfactory get document, and then you have to uh, add the Google Maps API call uh, as a script. You have to load it as a script. There are two examples here. Uh, if you have an API key, you can enter uh, question mark key is, and then the API key. But you can also load the Google Maps API without the API key and you can just leave uh, this empty. You don't need to, to, to specify an extra parameter. There are a lot of extra parameters possible. For example, you can, uh, if you use it this way, the Google Maps is presented in English, and all locations are written in English. But you can add an extra language string, for example, to show your map in Spanish, or in Dutch, or in German. Uh, it's documented in the, in the API documentation. So, how do you show a map on your website? Really simple, you define a, a div. I have tired here as a map div with a, with a bit of styling, 100% width and 600 pixels high. And then what I do is uh, you, you create a small script, you define a map variable, you create a function called load map, and within the load map functions, you define the default settings for your map uh, within the variable map options. So I set here the zoom level, zoom level 7, and I specify the center that I want to use. Um, as the center of the map. And the center is a simple uh, lat long object with a lat and the long coordinate. So 
um, you get the map ID and you just say uh, map is new Google Maps and then the map ID and the options and then the, in the end when the listener is ready it loads automatically the map so how does that look like if you call your, uh, your API then it simply shows the map with no markers on it and with the, the center of the Netherlands here as the center in the map and you see here the map is, is shown uh, in English um, so it's just a basic display of a Google map without markers. So what you want to do is, um, if you want to show a marker on the map, you will need to create a, a marker. I've defined here a, a start location with a let long coordinate. It's the center of the Netherlands. Um, I use my same map location, uh, map function again. And in here I say it's uh, create a marker. It's a new Google Maps marker with as a position the start location, which we've defined here. Uh, display it on the map and use it, the title, the center of Netherlands. How does that look like? It shows a map. And then it ah, here it is. And here, my marker shows up. And if I put my mouse on the, on the title, I hope it's, it's, you can see it in the back. But then it says, the center of the Netherlands, which is the title that I entered uh, in the map location. So how do you want? How do you go if you want to show several markers? Um, you simply create additional markers. Markers, um, create first marker and the next marker, and I simply add them all to the same map. So that's a method of showing more markers. But because we have a, a Joomla extension, we have all these addresses. We can simply create a for each loop and for each item. Um, if the item has a let and a long coordinate. I create a marker for it, so I simply use the, the, the process of, that shows the list to create a list of markers and show them on the map. So this is the code I've written completely. I still, I, I again use the, the same settings for my map, zoom level 7 and uh, the same center. Um, here's my for each loop, uh, for each item as item. If the item has a let and a long coordinate, uh, I create a marker for it and add it to the map. And then, uh, as a title, I write the name of the item, the name of the garage. So, how does it look like on the on the map itself? What we need, what we see here now, is all the addresses that are here below are created here inside the map because it's the it's the list view. So, if I go to the next page, then I see the markers that are then shown in the list. So it's a real basic principle, just look over the, over the items that are shown here and display that on the map. I can put my mouse on one of these items. And here is this Autobrei van Erkelens. Oh. Yeah, that's <laughs> Finland, Sweden. Here are my markers. So here is also uh, Autobrei van Erkelens, which is in, uh, in Hoederede, in, in, in the left side here. So by simply looking over your addresses, you can easily display them <coughs> on the map. So if I, if even if I go to page 9, for example, then I get these. And you see it's, it's pretty fast. It, the, the, the internet connection is not the fastest here, but it really shows your marks really quick. David. Quick question. Yes. Um, why are you uh, checking for uh, bigger than zero? Because let and long could be negative too, right? Yeah, true. Yes. Okay. Good catch. Okay. <laughs> I guess I should, uh, I should check if, if it has a let or a long. Okay. If it has a value, then it, I should display okay. it. I was just wondering if it's on purpose or by, by accident. No, the, 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 what I need, what I need to do here is check if there is a let or if there's there's a, and there is a new. Okay. Exactly, good catch, thanks. So, how to create your own marker item? That's really simple. You just create an image, an, a PNG image, and then uh, with the, the code you use to uh, define your marker, you can simply say the icon is the image that you want to use. Here is the image I created, uh, a super car uh, symbol. 
And instead of the system using the default marker, it now uses my own images. Um, I haven't set additional options because what you see here is that the, 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 the point of the marker is where the location is. You can define within the PNG image what is connected to the, the actual dot in the map. So now it's using the, uh, the middle bottom of the, of the image, but if you wanted to use, for example, the, the top left uh, location of the, of the image, then you should specify that in where you add the image to your marker. So this actually works the same. Uh, it's the same markers. Go to a different page, and so it's just a matter of using an image as a marker. Uh, one uh, remark we had last week we had a discussion or a uh, chat I guess that um, if you use uh, uh, standard markers from Google yeah. you can implement the path where it's located by uh, at Google mm -hmm. markers and Google changes the path so if you have an error right now for example you have to check the path because Google changed Yep. where the uh, markers now started. It was just last week or so. I, I will come to that because in, later on the, in, in my presentation I will tell you something about clustering. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Google changed the path of the clustering JavaScript, Except so that, that it broke everywhere. So yeah. okay. I'll show you. Good. Um, until now the start zoom was set uh, by the start latitude and longitude mm -hmm. and the zoom setting. Zoom setting 7 and the center is uh, uh, the lat long comment that's used to display the map. Um, what would be better if we use the start position and the zoom level determined by the markers on the map? So you only want the, the markers that you have you want to display, use that as a basis to display the center of your map. Well the solution to do that is use map bounds. Um, and with map bounds you can define the boundaries that Google uses to display your map. So you create a far bounds uh, variable and uh, every time you create a marker you extend the bounds with your marker position and then in the end only need, all you need to do is map fit bounds so it will automatically fit the markers within your map window. And what happens then is that um, the map now is being built in a way that all your markers are shown. So if you go to the next page, or another page, you see the map is automatically uh, shifted in a way that your markers are always visible on the map. And that's simply by, by adding the, the, the map bound. So the Google, yes? Yeah. Mm, just think about, this could be, Good idea in the Netherlands because it's a small country. But if you yeah. in Germany, and leave markers all yeah. over Germany, um, you get a very wide True. angle view of yeah. the whole country, which yeah. uh, which makes the map unreadable. So suppose you have, yeah. uh, suppose you have one in the north and one in the south. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. you have to zoom with your mouse to, to get yeah. the information. Maybe it's, I don't know. It's not good. But it's it's, it's the same idea. If you only have to display two markers here and you set the initial zoom level, yeah. you're always determine what, uh, what is the best zoom level to use and by using the bounce option uh, you, you're at least guaranteed that all the marks you have are shown simply in the map. Thanks. So next thing I want to use is info windows. Uh, an info window can show content in a pop-up window uh, at a specific location and the arrow of the window will be connected to the map. And an info window is, is usually connected to a marker, but it, you can also connect it to a let long coordinate without a marker. And the content within the info window is HTML, which is great. You can use images, text, links, etc. So, to use info windows, um, here's my main look for creating the markers. Um, I create an address links, which, which gives me the, 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 the initial view of the uh, the view of, the, of a simple address, one address. Um, I'll create variables for name, address, zip code, and city, and add, as, add that to a, uh, a variable called address info with some uh, HTML around it. And um, when I create the markers, I simply add, um, I add a click function to it. And the click function will show up an info window which has the content address info, 
and it's connected to the, the marker. Well, how does that show on the website? I again have my markers, but I can now click on a marker and it, it will show an, an info window containing uh, the link to the, the detailed information and the address information. So I can click on the link now and then I go to the detailed view of the list item. It's actually the same as clicking on the link in the list below because that's also connected to the uh, detail view. Another great solution would be here to add a small image to the pop-up window. You can, you can simply put HTML in your info window and that can be really uh, handy. So, what we have so far, we have Google Maps with some markers on it. Uh, markers have their own icon and every marker has an info window and the initial zoom based is now based on the markers on the map. Um, in the database there are uh, around 560 addresses and on the list page now we only display 10. Um, and markers close together are difficult to see. So that's two things I want to uh, solve. Um, how do we show all the addresses in the map? Um, when there is no search I want to show all addresses on the map. And, um, if there are many markers, I want to cluster them together. And if search is used, I only want to show the, the found addresses on the map. So how to solve this? Um, we need to modify the model, because uh, the Joomla MVC model returns item, items according to what has been asked. Um, the pagination, the sorting, and uh, the, the search arguments. If I look at the simple list now, um, It starts at page one, and I only see uh, the first initial 10 records. Uh, and if I go to the next page, the model only returns record number 11 to 20. That's something that's built in the MVC model. If I want to search, um, it only shows the results. Um, so we need to add a function that returns all items, and not, that, not just the ones that are uh, returned by the model. So how do we do that? I add a new model function, public function, all items. Uh, all it does is a really simple query. Uh, mm -hmm. Select every field from the com, S, com address database table where status one. I want only want to display the, the, the published items. Um, get them from the database and return them. And within the within the view, only I need to add, add is uh, the other model is this get model to connect to my model and get in the variable all items retrieve all items. So we need to modify the view. Um, initially, I say the address items I want to show is this items, which are the items that are returned from normally from the model, the first initial 10 records. Um, if, I, if I'm not searching, if, if your search query is empty, then I'm going to say um, address items is all items. So no longer this items. And then look over the address items list. So how does this function on the map? Um, initially, I now get all my garages, which is quite a list. It's, it's 500 garage uh, companies in, in on the list. So it's, this, this looks really crazy. But these are all my garage companies. But if I start searching, for example, I want to search for companies in Eindhoven, which is a city in the south of the Netherlands. Eindhoven. Search. Then I only get the addresses returned from Eindhoven. You see these are all on the same address, that's why they are displayed on the same location. But because of the bounce option, I get a map nicely connected to the bounce that I have set. If I clear my search, I get all items again. And then I've got this list. So normally you will see all items on the map, and only if you start searching, you will get the results shown in the map. Can you, can you scroll down? We have all the addresses in the list? No, only the no, first no, 10. No, so no, the, no. the list view acts as usual. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, I have the setting in the back end uh, to say uh, display only 10 items. My list, uh, list item length is 10. So I only show 10 mm -hmm. items, and I can page through here. And the map will remain 
the map will remain the same. Yeah, okay. The only list will update. As long as I'm not searching, the map will show all items. But if I start searching, uh, for example, if I search for Peter, I get automobile bedrijf Peter Hellings, uh, Peter Manen. I mean, then, the only, then only the addresses that, I, that you're searching for are shown on the map. Okay, clustering. Um, with many addresses, there, there are way too much markers on the map. Uh, and markers can be clustered with an external Google Maps library. It's called the Marker Cluster. It's on GitHub. And uh, well, Google did some, uh, not some nice thing. They had this um, initial JavaScript, if you, if you check the source here. Uh, here is the, 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 the normal version and here is the, uh, the compiled version. And they had this online on a link, so you can simply include this link inside your view. And last week, like you said with the, with the images, they removed this link. So mm -hmm. everybody using the online version of the cluster JavaScript uh, has now, now has an error. So what I did, um, I modified uh, the code to use the local version of the cluster. So the, um, there are the most important parameters for clustering are on what map do you want to cluster? Uh, you need to pass an array of markers you want to cluster together. You, want, you need to pass the cluster size and the zoom level. The cluster size is the, the distance between markers that allows them to be clustered. Okay. So here we add, um, this is the old code that I have to update my slide, but this is where the, the original uh, compiled version was hosted. That link, link no longer works, unfortunately. Uh, so we need now to define an array for the markers, and every time we, we add a marker, we add the marker with the push command to the marker array. So this array is built up for clustering. And then I say here, the marker cluster options are use a grid size of 35 and a maximum of 15. So as soon as you start zooming in, they will break up in, in, in individual items. And then you have to create a new marker cluster object, uh, specifying the map you want to show them in, the markers you want to show, and the options you want to use. So, this will give you this view with the same 500 addresses. And now you see these are nicely clustered together. Um, here are six addresses, here are 18 addresses. And you can simply uh, click on these clusters to zoom in. For example, if I click on the 11 here, it'll show these 11 items. And here are three left, and I can zoom in here. And then you see these three items. Uh, these are two addresses on the same location, that's why you only see uh, two, two, uh, two markers. Uh, let's go to another location here, 16, 16 addresses, 3, and here are these three. So as soon as, as, soon as you zoom in on these clusters items, uh, they very nicely they, they open up, so to speak. And if you zoom out again, you will see them going back together again. even to the point that you have one object left with all 557 addresses. Geocoding. Geocoding is the process of converting an address, like a street address, into, a, uh, into long coordinates. Uh, and geo geocoding can be done through the Google Maps Geocoding API. Um, again, there's a lot of documentation here. Um, for this, you can use an API key, but you, you're not necessary to use it. Um, if you don't use an API key, you can send 2,500 requests per day with a maximum of 10 per second. So if you want to encode a lot of, lot of addresses, uh, like more than 2,500 at once, you will need an API key. Um, an example calls for uh, uh, in JSON and XML results. Um, I have here a call to the, uh, to the geocode for an address in Netherlands, Woudenbergsweg in Zeist. Um, this is the JSON variant. I hope you can read it, but this is JSON result. And you see here then, in the end, the lat-long coordinates here. 
but you can also use a, a, an XML result and then you get the response in XML format. So it's really simple, you just push an address to the geocode and you'll get an answer with the lat long coordinates. So how do you do that in your own extension? Um, first, get the location data through <coughs> the, uh, the address, the street, the zip code. Uh, then, before saving to the database, get the lat long code through the geocoding API. And then save all your data to the database. And this can be done, for example, in the, in the prepare table function. Uh, in, in, the, in the standard Joomla component, there's a prepare table function which uh, handles the data before it goes into the database. Um, so this is a standard prepare table uh, function in the admin model. Um, we can extend that by saying um, if there's an empty uh, table lot <coughs> and table long, so if I don't have a lot and long coordinate yet, then I will create a string uh, consisting of the address, the zip code, the city, and the country. Um, I URL encode it to be able to send it to Google. Uh, this is the address of the uh, geocoding API. <coughs> um, I get results with uh, file get contents as a JSON result, decode results, and then add the lot and the long to, to the table fields. Um, and that's actually it. After that, it, the data is automatically saved to your database. So, how does, how does, how does this work in practice? Um, I have here the backend of my component, and suppose I want to create a, a new address. New. Uh, Rene's garage. Uh, address. Clubhouse 11. This is my zip code. Best is my city, Netherlands. And if I uh, do save then, without closing, it automatically gets the lot and the long coordinate. So by simply saving it to the database, it sends the data to Google and you get the lot and long coordinate back. What happens if Google cannot find the address? It stays empty. You, you won't get a lot long. So if we then uh, search for it, RNA, it's now here in the, in the database, uh, uh, item ID 558, Rene's garage. Let's look at it in the front. Uh, all addresses on map. Search for Rene. And then here it is. Let's zoom in a little bit. you can read it, but here it says Klaproos, which is the address that I entered. So it's, it's by simply adding this to the prepare table function, you can really easily um, uh, encode your address into that long. Uh, you could even write a function that allows you to select several addresses and then uh, add an extra button here to encode more address at once. But remember, you cannot do more than 2,500 in, in one day, so uh, at least without using an API key. Okay, well, another thing you very much see in, in, in uh, a very many used function is a radius search around a zip code. For example, a dealer locator. A locator you have a, an, a database of uh, physicians or uh, garage companies and you want to search the closest garage according to a certain a zip code. Well, in order to do that we need to extend the search form with the, with the zip code field and the radius select because we want to select uh, what radius to use. Um, before we go searching we find the length and the long of the zip code you enter. And then we search in the database all addresses where the distance between the lot long of the zip code and the lot long of the garages are within the requested radius. So we need to do two modifications. We need to extend the search filter form and to modify the model code. So how do we do that? In, in Component Creator it's really easy. Um, component um, Creator uses, an extra, it uses one XML that defines your search form. So I extend it with two fields, a postcode field and a radius field. Uh, well, how does it how does how does it look then in the front? Uh, 
Um, as soon as you add these fields, a component creator automatically adds uh, search tools here. And this will show the zip code to search for and the radius selector. So in, in component creator, it's really easy. Just by adding these two fields to your form XML, you get the extra search fields. Then, uh, find the let along of the zip code. Um, first, we need to get the search filter values in the model. So we, I'm going to get the filter postcode field and the filter radius field, the, the results of what they, what they entered. Uh, and then with the same uh, geocoding API, I'm searching for the lat long of the zip code that the person entered. It's exactly the same code as when you store uh, this, the lat long of an address. Um, then we need to select the address by distance. Um, we have the lot long of the zip code that the person entered. Uh, we have the radius we want to search for, and we have a table of addresses, and each address has a lot long code. So how do we do that? We can do that with one simple, well not simple, with one SQL, SQL query. Um, you do a select of um, all fields with these extra uh, conditions added to it, uh, from com address as a, where state is one, um, and what, what I do here is I create an extra field in my query called distance, which holds the distance of the zip code I'm searching for and the address that I'm searching for. And I'm sorting that by distance uh, ascending. Um, there's an article on databasejournal.com, the, the link unfortunately is not working now, so I'll make sure it's working when I get the presentation online. Um, this number here is needed to search for in kilometers. Uh, if you want to search in miles, you have to enter a different value here. Uh, that's also written in the, in the database journal uh, article, but I'll make sure it's in, in, in the slides that are online. Um, but, and with this simple, simple query, you can get all the addresses in the radius that you're requesting. So we need to apply that in the model code, um, in the get list query function. Um, we select the table and columns, apply a search field and we adjust the sort rule. That's what you normally do. Um, here we're getting the postcode, the, search, the postcode we're searching for and the radius we're searching for. Um, here we are getting the lot long of the zip code and then we enter the query. It's, you can't see it in complete because it didn't fit on the screen. And if you don't, if I don't have a lot long of the zip code I'm searching for, I'm doing just doing a normal select from database to retrieve all records. Uh, and searching is amazingly fast in the database. Um, we build a website with, uh, uh, I don't know the correct English word, dietists, people who help you uh, to follow a diet. Uh, we built a website in the Netherlands with 4,000 addresses and the database answers within seconds when you search by distance. I can show you. It is in Dutch, but uh, the, the functionality is the same. Uh, suppose I want to search for all dietists in a radius around my postal code, uh, within a radius of 10 kilometers. Search. <coughs> and here are the addresses. So it's, it's pretty fast. Uh, and this is on a server where the database server and the web server are on the same, uh, are on the same machine. So we don't even have a separate database server here. Um, he found 72 addresses. If I search for uh, within a radius of 50 kilometers, we found 722. So we, what we've done here is uh, there are more than 150 search results. We won't display the map, but the, the result is coming in really fast. So how does it work in our garage uh, website? <coughs> Again, if I search around my, my uh, local zip code, I want all the garages within 25 kilometers. Here are all addresses within a radius of 25 kilometers. And what I've added here uh, is, a, is a nice trick. I can click on uh, the, uh, the distance here, and it automatically shows where it is on the map. So you, you see here the addresses. Um, um, sorted by distance.
I've put all example code that I used in my presentation on GitHub, so the complete com address um, uh, component is online, it's where you can review all the code. Uh, it's all on GitHub. Oh, sorry. And I've left some uh, I've left some installation instructions in both Dutch and English. Uh, you can download the complete installer here. You can find all the code. And my slides are online here for you to review. Any questions? dragging and dropping, dropping off, uh, but you can make marks that are draggable. Mm. So but I mean, uh, this, uh, for mm, num the, the number of calls to the API, the request mm. that we have limit, uh, I guess it's several drags, several requests, right? Oh, it's one. No. Yeah. One, oh. only one. Okay. Mm. okay. Because it's for, for, for the dragging part, uh, it calculates the, the coordinates internally, so no okay. additional requests required. Mm. In fact, the geocoding will suggest uh, correct form of the address as well. So if you put in a spelling mistake mm. or you formatted the address not quite right, yeah. one of the results it gives you is the preferred spelling and representation of the address. You can actually put into your database the correct. Yeah. And one of my last projects, uh, we had a, it was in a real estate portal, um, and uh, the client wanted some, some sort of tree-like hierarchy. Uh, so you can go from uh, Germany, then one of our, uh, of our states, city, and this kind of thing. Um, and instead of uh, manually uh, inserting all these things, we ended up with uh, the reverse way. Um, when someone saves a new uh, item, um, we'll get all those geo-coordination data uh, from, from Google um, and they have this tree information. So you not only get let and long, but also uh, which state is it, which country, which yeah. city, which part yeah. of the city. It's yeah. pretty amazing. And if it's a company, company is in the category of companies. Yeah. If you look here at the, G at the, at the JSON uh, results, you see here is the address that I that I requested there, uh, Wodenberg and you see here it's a uh, it's incised uh, uh, province of is Utrecht, the Netherlands. Uh, you, you you get all sort of extra information linked to the address. But even if it's, a, if it's in a local area which has its own name or official name, you get you get that back as well. Yeah. So. Okay. Thanks very much.